Hey everyone, welcome to Tour Validated. My name is DJ Lance, joined by Chris McCormick and Jeff Thomas, and today we are in the Ping Putting Lab. Very exciting, looking around this place. I'm already so pumped to get into it. So Chris, what are your thoughts? So obviously this environment, uh, first of all, thanks for having us over. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. This is an absolutely amazing opportunity and really anxious to get into, I mean, what Ping was founded on. Yep. I mean, all about the putter. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if we're gonna go any place for a putter fitting, where better to go than, I mean, essentially, where it all started. Absolutely. So diving into this, going through essentially a full putter fitting, just like any of the Ping staffers or tour players would go through. Jeff, if you want to kind of give us a rundown as to what we're going to be doing today and some of the data we're going to be looking at. Absolutely, yeah. So this is our, our putting lab. This is where we do all of our putter fittings for our VIP guests that come to the Proving Grounds, any of our tour players that come. Uh, this is where we do all of our testing for new product lines with the, the putting pendulum. Uh, but a little bit about the table. So the table is six and a half feet wide. It's 45 feet, 10 inches long. Sits on its own foundation from the building. So it's uh, perfectly level to one one thousandth of an inch. Uh, the table itself is it's 70 tons. So when uh, a player comes in for a putter fitting, what we can do is we can get a lot of technical stuff in here. So we'll, uh, we have a lot of cameras that we can hook you up. So we can look at face on, we can look at ground level for lie angle. We can look at down the line. Um, and then we'll hook you up to iPing, which is our proprietary putting app, which will look at a lot of uh, club data. Uh, so you, how much rotation you have, how you're aiming it, your lie, your, your, your loft. Um, so all that kind of stuff. And then we also have an outdoor putting green. So once we get all the technical data in here, then we can go out to the putting green and do some like game-like fitting stuff out there as well. So you can really get dialed in here you know, paint proving grounds. It looks like it. There's a lot of fun toys in here. We've got a great wall of history here, not only talking about Mr. Karsten, but uh, some of the putter designs he's come up with over the years and how we ended up where we are now. So without further ado, I think it's time to get into it. But before we do, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And now I think it's Chris's turn. Like Chris is gonna lead us off. So if these guys are just blown away by what they're seeing out here, gotta come see you. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So sign up online, yep. come check this place out, and I guarantee you, I mean, visually, you're not going to be disappointed, and I'm really excited to dive into this experience. All right, so uh, since you don't have your gamer, we're just going to start with an answer style putter. So that has a middle of line toe hang, so about 40 degrees, which is a good starting point just to look at your metrics. All right, so let's uh, clip on iPing for you. Okay. So you statically fit just based off your height and your wrist of floor into something at 34 and a half inches. So that's okay. what we're starting with now is 34 and a half. 34 and a half, perfect. How's that length feel? Length feels good. Okay. So, I mean, just as far as where my eye line falls in relationship to ball, it feels comfortable. So it is just a little bit longer than what you've played in the past, so. I've typically been right at 34, so adding that extra half inch. And last time I was fit for a putter, that was before I had some back issues. Okay. And so, I mean, being able to stand a little taller, yeah. take some pressure off that lower back, I'm not gonna complain about okay, that. Okay, perfect. All right, very good. So we'll take a look at your eye ping numbers up here on the screen. Okay. So after your five putts, uh, now we have all your stroke metrics here on eye ping. So eye ping is just all based off consistency. So sure. um, everything in green would be consistent on your stroke. Yellow would be moderate. Red would be inconsistent. So okay. uh, the first number that we would look at would be this uh, putting handicap. So this plus 0 0.2. That's your overall consistency score, which is on the same scale as like an actual handicap. So a little bit better than scratch, which is very good. I so mean, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, each one of these categories or metrics that we're looking at has their own consistency score and then the numbers in the white are going to be your stroke metrics. So the first category that we would look at would be your closing angle. So what that okay. 2.9 degrees is measuring, that's just measuring your face rotation from the start of the downswing back to impact. So we fit for three categories of putters. So putters that are straight, slight, and strong arc. So straight arc putters would be a little bit more face balance. Okay. Uh, slight arc would have a little bit of toe hang, like an answer style, which is gonna hang about 40 degrees. 
and then strong arc putters are going to have a lot of toe hang. So we're going to really want to try to match up a putter to that player's natural tendency of the kind of forces and torques they're applying to the putter. So for you, 2.9, uh, we kind of fit more into a face balance model. So something about zero to about three and a half degrees of rotation. Uh, okay. We'll look at something a little bit more face balanced. So you noticed that you said that you have maybe a missed tendency a little bit more off to the right. Um, so anytime that you have a putter with a little bit more toe hang, it's always going to be delivered just a little bit more open than something more face balanced. So sure. a face balanced model is just going to be a little bit easier for you to square up. So definitely look at some face balanced models for you, just with your rotation and your missed tendency. And that's been, I mean, just historically, that's been the model that I have had the most success with on the putting green is something that's a little bit more face balanced. Okay, yeah, perfect. And it really matches up well with your, your rotation. So. Um, the next thing would be your impact angle. So this negative 0.4, that's just a relative measurement from where you are at setup compared to where you are at impact with the face. So it's just really how you're aiming it. Now this number doesn't need to be right at zero. You know, we've noticed all the, you know, our best players that come in, our tour staff, LPGA tour staff that come in, uh, that number doesn't need to be at zero. We're, we're just really trying to focus on consistency. So what we've noticed sure. is that they're very repeatable. So they could be a little bit open or a little bit closed relative to their starting point. Uh, but they're consistent and that's what we're trying to focus on. So what negative 0.4 means for you is that you're just slightly closed relative to your starting point. So maybe just a little bit of a right aimer and then you come in a little bit closed, but 0.4 is pretty minimal. So it puts you kind of more into the square from setup. Okay. Uh, tempo uh, of 2.3, so that's just a time ratio from your backswing to your forward swing. So in Iping, uh, we get your overall stroke time, your backswing time, and your forward swing time. So it's going to give us a ratio. Now 1.8 to 2.2 is going to be more of an average tempo in Iping, and this is what we use to help fit for head weight. So okay. for you at 2.3, that just means you have a little bit of a slower tempo. Uh, so potentially something just a touch heavier might offer a little bit more stability for you throughout your stroke. So That's um, good to hear because yeah. I've characteristically liked a little bit more head weight. Okay, so that perfect. makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense just based off that tempo. So we can you know, look at different head shapes that have maybe a little bit heavier head. If we do look at that PLD custom, we can add weight to any model if we need to. So it's, okay. it's going to be a good option just to look at something maybe a little bit heavier for you. Uh, your lie angle of 23.3. So our standard lie angle is 20 degrees. Uh, we're measuring it from the vertical position, where if you're more familiar with that 70 degree number, that would be measuring it from the ground level up. So right. 70 and 20 are the same lie angle. So for you, you are showing just maybe a touch flatter with the lie angle. So we could look at going a little bit flatter. Now, 23.4, you know, that's about three and a half degrees flat. We probably wouldn't start there, uh, maybe split the difference there, because a lot of time better players are going to make an adjustment with that lie angle. So if I gave you something at, you know, three, three and a half degrees flat, you might drop your hands or scoot further away from it. And we don't really want you to kind of change your stroke and kind of adapt to the putter. We want the opposite. So uh, potentially look at something maybe just a little bit flatter, see if you make that adjustment, and then we can go kind of go from there with your lie angle. But contact looking at the camera looks pretty good, uh, but just toe is maybe slightly up in the air. Okay. Uh, and then your last metric would be your shaft lean. So negative 1.6, uh, that's just measuring where your hands are at impact. So you do have a little bit of forward shaft lean, about a degree and a half. Uh, now our standard loft is closer to three degrees. Uh, we would like to see the dynamic loft, so the combination of your shaft lean number and the loft of the putter to be around three degrees. So potentially with your forward shaft lean of a degree, degree and a half, uh, potentially adding a little bit of loft because we don't want that ball driving into the turf, which could be really affecting speed and start line. So, oh, especially on longer putts. So definitely maybe look at something a little bit more loft. Uh, now here at the Proving Grounds, we can you know look at Shaflin. It's going to give us a good uh, starting point for loft. We can also look at Quintic numbers. Just just look at ball data, see how it's coming off the face, and then we can also go out to the the putting green as well and, and hit some putts on, outside on the real grass too to see if we need to make any more adjustments to loft. Now with the uh, the neck or the hosel configuration that's on the putter, does that influence like how the player will set up in regards to shaffling? Yeah, sometimes, especially so for you if you have a little bit more forward shaffling, we can maybe look at something that has maybe a little less offset, so that okay. that, that, that could help with that. Um, but yeah, that's going to mainly be a factor in how you know, how much putter, how much toe hang that type of putter has. So just kind of how that shaft axis goes into the head. So, but yeah, you can see some adjustments with different offsets and different hosels too. So gotcha. we can definitely confirm that uh, just by hitting a couple of different models. Oh, cool! I'm curious to see where we go from here. And uh, I mean, I'm already sitting at a uh, at a 0 0.2 yeah. on the index, which is a little better than the rest of the game. Yeah, so. pretty good. Let's. So, uh, yeah. Let's see where we go from here. What's our next model? All right, let's uh, so let's start by hitting a few you know, maybe face balance options. So okay. you said you like the the Oslo model. So 
Uh, we can definitely take a look at that, which is a little bit more of a mallet shape, a little bit heavier than a traditional answer style. You know, it's going to be a little bit more face balanced. So sure. uh, that could be a really good starting point for you in terms of just looking at some numbers, seeing what that face balance model does. And the Oslo is in that PLD custom line, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this model, we can look at different hosel configurations, you know, plumber's necks, answer four hosels, but that double bend does fit your metrics. So we can take a look at that. And a little heavier head weight? Yes, 365 grams. And then we could add just a little bit of weight to that if we needed to, but I think that's a good starting point where that answer style we started with is 350 grams. Perfect. Oh, All right. Curious Perfect. to hit this guy. Now, in the past, I have had an Oslo design as far as what was a previous gamer. Yep. And when it came in, I saw this guy sitting on the shelf <laughs> and just immediately gravitated to it like it was an old friend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's based off of the older uh, Oslo. Um, it's just a little bit smaller, but same design. Now, is the, the face actually firmer on this head than it was on that answer we originally tested? It's actually the same milling depth. So uh, it's 10 thousandths on the, the depth of the mill. So the answer model that you tried has that same depth. Gotcha. Just feels like it's coming off the face a little hotter yeah. through impact. It might be just because of the weight, just a little bit heavier. All right. Proved a little bit, plus 0.3 now. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we uh, did your second iPing session, got a little bit more consistent. Now we're at plus 0.3, which is still very, very good. Little improvement. Uh, yep, absolutely. So uh, still all in the green, uh, and just looking over your metrics, you know, your, ro your rotation hasn't changed much. So it's still, you know, the first time is 2.9, now it's 2.8. So again, that's gonna be kind of your natural tendency. So definitely something a little bit more face balance is gonna be a good option for you. Sure. Uh, with that mallet style, you were a little bit more consistent on how you were aiming it. Uh, so you can see that you're very, very similar with your impact numbers, your impact angle number, uh, where we were at negative 0.4 before, but now you're zeroed out right at zero, but the Love consistency it. went up. So uh, you went from plus 0.4 to two, plus 2.4. So you do aim that maybe a little bit more consistently, just with that bigger shaped mallet with that longer line. So uh, I think we're definitely heading in the right direction with something that's a little bit uh, heavier and a little bit more of a mallet shape, a little bit more face balance. Uh, tempo didn't change, so you're at 2.3 there, so that didn't change much, so I still like you at a little bit heavier head weight. Mm -hmm. uh, lie angle shaftling changed a little bit. The shaftling could be because there's a little bit of sole relief on that, so it kind of forced your hands back a little bit. Gotcha. So we'll do uh, another eye ping session just to confirm that we're in the correct amount of loft, but uh, yeah, numbers look really, really good there in that one session. So we can take a look at one another model and uh, go from there. Yeah, let's see what we got. Perfect. All right, so um, I think maybe this uh, DS72 might be a good option for you. So okay. uh, the, the putter that Victor Hovland is using, or we can also look at uh, something like this where it's a little bit different shape. That's our prime time, uh, which we can do in a few different hosels. But like I said, you know, something a little bit more face balance is gonna be a good option. So have you ever used anything? This particular model has a line on the top rail. Uh, versus the DS72 where it has a line in the back flange. Uh, we can you know, take a look at alignment features, but you know, since that Oslo did have a line in the back flange, might be look, you know, look at something that has maybe that line on the top yeah, row. Yeah, let's so. mix it up a little okay, bit. A little different shape and a little different optic. Let's see what this guy does. Perfect. As far as the shape goes, I do like how this tine kind of frames the ball. Okay. Yeah, there's some ball width features. Uh, you know, we have that center line, but then in the back flange area, uh, that would be ball width as well. So that's just going to really help frame it nicely. How does it have the back saver? You can scoop the ball off the green with it. At the... <laughs> yep, absolutely. After you miss the two footer. It's good there, right in the center. How do you like that line on the top rail instead of the back the back flange? Yeah, it kind of helps me focus a little bit more on that leading edge. I did notice that I mean, the break between leading edge blank and then optic 
kind of towards that trailing edge and on the, the top back half of the putter was a little distracting. Okay. I mean, this kind of pulls my eye right to that leading edge and kind of focusing more on impact. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep. I do like that optic a little better, just okay. personal preference. Okay. I'm curious to see what the data says. Yeah, absolutely. Let's look at the numbers. All right, so we have our metrics for our third putter. Uh, really, really good. So Third time's a charm? Yeah, absolutely. So you can see that's plus 2.6 now. So Let's go. Improved by you know 2.3 uh, on the handicap. So it's very, very good. So again, looking at your metrics, very similar specs in terms of the closing angle, how you're aiming it, um, the lie and the actually the shaft lean got you a little bit more neutral. So it was okay. something with that Oslo where it was maybe forcing your hands back, a little uh, less consistent on how you were delivering that putter with the Oslo but this looks very, very good. So now you're a little bit more neutral. So you still have a little bit of forward shaft lane, but it's only about a half degree. So we can kind of validate that outside on the putting green, make, see if we need to make any adjustments to, to loft. But all the other numbers look very, very consistent. And I think this would be a good option for you. Just going with a little bit smaller mallet shape and then that line on the top really helped out with alignment, so. I really like that optic up on top. Yeah, absolutely. So that, uh, I mean, if you turn your back and you're not paying attention and, and that putter just happens to walk out of here, I'm just going to say it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So, you know, for the specs, you know, 34 and a half inches, uh, just got your eye line in a really good spot. Uh, just going to touch a touch flatter with that lie angle. So instead of a, our 20 degrees, which is our standard lie, just going a little bit flatter to 21 um, and then potentially add just maybe a little bit of loft. but. Uh, we're, we're pretty neutral on the shaft lane. So, you know, three, three and a half degrees is gonna be a good loft for you, but we can go okay. out there on the putting green and test it out. I, I'm pretty happy with that guy. I'm sure. curious to see how, uh, see how my partner does in here. Yeah. I'm setting the bar. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we're, we're plus 2.6. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, yeah. let's, uh, let's get him in here and let's, uh, let's see what kind of numbers he puts up. Yeah, sounds good. All right, DJ, uh, so we gotta have a, a putter and answer style. Uh, mm -hmm. Since you don't have your gamer, we'll start there. Uh, but you statically fit just based off your height and your wrist of floor into something 35 inches. Yep. So we'll go ahead and start there and then uh, look at the eye ping numbers. So I typically use a line on a ball Kay. just for like framing and, and ensuring that I line up properly. Yeah, feel free if you'd like to line up your ball, then we can look at those metrics as well. Yeah, for sure. Okay, see if that helps at all. Yep. I don't want to be high maintenance, but I want to no, give absolutely. you Absolutely, going through your routine. As it's accurate important. as possible. And I put golf shoes on. Blades always feel so good to me. <laughs> Especially if you're a little bit more of a feel player. Right. Yeah. I could probably benefit from a little bit more of that feel. Sometimes I do get a little analytical on a putting green and the rest of the course, I'm not like that at all. Yeah. Putting green is definitely the time where I overthink a little bit sometimes. Yeah, so maybe even just kind of talking through, just maybe looking at just a dot or something just to help you get kind of get centered. Grip feels nice. I know these these grips are always some of my favorites. All right, very good. Down. Let's take a look. All right, so plus four on your consistency score. Very, very good. So just looking uh, down the line with your, your stroke metrics, your closing angle, so not a lot of face rotation, mm -hmm. so 2.2 degrees. Mm -hmm. Again, that's just measuring that face rotation from the start of the downswing back to impact. So okay. you see your consistency score at plus 5.7, very, very good. But you said we did start with an answer style and you said that maybe you have a missed tendency a little bit more off to the right. Yep. Again, that, that putter's gonna have a little bit more toe hang than something you know like more of a mallet shape that's a little bit more face balance. So we could look at something that has a little is a little bit more face balance, so it'll be a little bit easier for you to square up. So okay. we'll definitely take a look at that. Uh, you're a little bit of a right aimer, and then you come in a little bit close relative to that starting point, mm -hmm. uh, but very, very consistent. And again, okay. that's just what we're trying to focus on there. So you're about a degree close relative to your, your uh, setup. Okay. Uh, tempo of 2.2. Uh, just slightly on the slower side of average. Mm -hmm. So potentially maybe look at something just a touch heavier, just to offer a little bit more stability on those shorter putts that okay. you maybe said you tend to kind of struggle with. Right. So uh, that just might give you a little, you know, a little extra stability. Lie angle of 20 degrees looks really good. So that static starting length at 35 inches, we got your eye line right over it. Uh, very good on that lie angle, it's really centered contact. So um, I like you at 35 and then we'll, we'll stick with uh, 20 degrees on the lie angle if, uh, 
and then uh, your shaftling number of plus one. So uh, you just have your hands just slightly back at impact. Mm -hmm. So you're just adding just a touch of loft. So potentially just taking a little bit of loft off to get closer to that dynamic loft of three degrees that yep. we're looking for. So uh, we have a model here that's a little bit more face balance that we could try. You like the look of it. So yep. let's look at some numbers. Okay, I'm gonna stick with what I did the first time. I've got line on the ball. Here we go. That felt pretty solid. So I will say there was a, a freedom to having that putter that we looked at previously with no alignment aids. Yep. I didn't find myself fidgeting as much as I see with something like this. Don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but it just felt so, so free. But we will soon see. I'm very high maintenance doing this <laughs> with the line every time. Like if, if you had to do putter fittings, I think with me every day, you wouldn't be able to be as efficient as you typically are. Now that's important to go through your routine. Okay, last one. Well, got better. We got better. <laughs> wow. All right, well, we got a little bit more consistent. So that's, that's pretty good that you've improved on a plus four. So now we're at plus 4.3. So okay. the biggest differences that we've seen, the metrics are all very, very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, still maybe taking a little bit of loft off, keeping you around a standard lie angle of 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. Potentially that, that one mallet was maybe just a little bit more upright, but yeah. uh, we can kind of confirm that. But tempo didn't change, but you really, really improved. Your metrics on your closing angle and impact angle are very similar, mm -hmm. uh, but the consistency went up. So okay. um, actually putting a putter in your hands that actually fits your rotation a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You can see, so you, you went to plus 6.8 on your closing angle, which is very, very good. So with that closing angle and impact angle being so consistent, you're mm -hmm. gonna get a lot of putts started on your intended line and going something a little bit more face balance is just gonna help with that right miss a little bit better. Okay. So how did that feel? How did that alignment feature look on the top rail? Um, now I think we could potentially look at maybe something because uh, you're consistent, very consistent with a blade shape yeah. as with a mallet, but maybe look at a, a blade shape that's a little bit more face balanced right. and see what the numbers look like. Um, and then we could always come back to that because that, that num those numbers look really good. Yeah, this felt really good. I love the, the optics here with just the single line. I don't feel like I get two line lock, but it does help me with the line I put on the ball. And the finish, um, obviously really good in here, here in Arizona with the sun. Yep. This is going to be nice and muted, which uh, it looks really premium and nice. So. Could be very happy if we stopped right here, but yeah. next one's dealer's choice. Just curious to see what this one will look like. Okay. Love it. Yeah. Here we go. Face balanced-ish. Yeah, so that's your an answer style. Uh, it's called our Answer X. Yep. Uh, it would be available in the PLD custom line, but uh, it's that a little bit bigger shape of an answer, mm -hmm. uh, but it is going to be more face balanced. So Perfect. So it's going to really fit your stroke metrics nicely. Uh, this one doesn't have any alignment features on it, so we can kind of confirm if you needed something with a you know line on the top or yep. a dot. But uh, just to, just curious to see kind of what your numbers look like with more of a face balanced blade shape. Yeah, that looks great. All right. Solid, good feedback. Like the finish. Still good. Still but good. The, the time model was a little bit more consistent for you. Yep. I could tell that was that one felt the best. That was really yeah, good. for sure. With the with the shaft lane and uh, still really good numbers, but you were just a little bit more consistent. So that was a really fun process for Chris and I. Big thanks to Jeff for having us in. That Absolutely. was a blast. Chris and I actually uh, ended up in the same exact putter. Same putter. Just 
two strokes better than what I ended up with. <laughs> so that was a, a really fun time. We got to test a few different products. For those of us out there that, uh, that like this experience and would potentially like to have an opportunity to come in and go through this experience on their own, Jeff, what do they need to do? Yeah, just uh, pingpld.com, and then you can either sign up for the in-person fitting or do it virtually if you can't make it to Phoenix. But uh, you'll get a good fitting both uh, both virtually and in-house. So sign up for the in-person fitting. Sign I up for the in-person fitting. Awesome experience, and this place is uh, is visually impressive. Yeah, we've been, and I mean Jeff's okay too. We've <laughs> been very lucky to experience some cool things in golf. This is bucket list, very cool, and and very underrated part of the bag to get fit for because ultimately. You're going to use it every hole, so Absolutely. make sure you spend some time doing it. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and come see Jeff at Ping. This has been an awesome time. Big thank you. Absolutely.